Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center Kitchens, and today we're going to show you the proper way to carve a Thanksgiving turkey. So first let's make sure we've got together all the things that we're going to need. First you're going to need a large enough cutting board. You can use wood or synthetic, but we tend to think that a large synthetic board is cleaner when you're doing proteins and meats because it's a little bit more sanitary. So one thing that helps, a little bit of a kitchen hack for you, is to put a little piece of shelf liner under the board, and that's gonna keep it from wiggling around on you when you're trying to cut the turkey so you have a nice stable surface. Next up, a good pair of tongs is optional, but it can help you manage things. You can also wear gloves if you wish. Now, some folks like to wear latex, but we've actually got a pair of cut-resistant fabric gloves here, which are a great option. Since we're working around slippery foods and sharp objects, it's a great little bit of added safety. Next, we're gonna need a nice platter that we're gonna to use to place all of our sliced meat on because we're gonna be doing all of this today in the kitchen itself. Because what we're not gonna do is emulate that famous Norman Rockwell painting and put the whole bird on the table. This is gonna be a fairly messy job and you're not gonna want that all over your nice table or your dinner guests. And finally, the knives. And today we're gonna to be using a pair of blades. Although there are plenty of options out there, ideally this pair is gonna get you through most things. We've got a boning knife, as well as a longer straight slicing knife. And together, they're gonna to make quick work of parting out this bird. And the knives we're using today are from the Wusthof Classic Collection. We've got their nine inch slicer, as well as their six inch upswept boning knife. Now, a straight boning knife will definitely work, but I prefer this upswept style. It makes certain cuts a little easier, thanks to that big long sweep to the edge. Now the first step after you roast your turkey or fry it or however you prepare it is you want to make sure to let it rest for at least 30 minutes. Now that's going to help more of the juices actually stay inside the meat so it's not going to run out all over your cutting board, but make sure you save all your drippings for a nice gravy later. While you wait for that bird to rest, this is a great time to make sure that your kitchen knives are nice and sharp. We love the options from Spyderco, such as their Sharp Maker, as well as this brand new Gauntlet model here. It's a great thing to keep in your kitchen. Make sure you give your knives a few strokes to make sure they're ready to go. Best part about a system like this is using the white stones that are included. You actually don't really need to use a kitchen steel to hone your edges as you go. So we've got our bird over here. We're going to transfer it to the cutting board. Now you can see that the little pop-up temperature gauge has popped up, which should indicate that this is done. But make sure you've always tested to make sure it's done with a proper thermometer and don't trust that little plastic piece just by itself. Now, if you trust your bird, be sure to cut through any string or skin that's holding it closed first. Spread it apart a little bit, and now's the time to empty out any aromatics from inside the cavity of the turkey. Because you didn't cook any stuffing in there, did you? No? Good, because that would be unsanitary. Just remove anything from in there and discard. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the leg and the thigh from each side. If you pull back on the leg a little bit, you're gonna see this seam of skin open up and you wanna run your knife right down there, gradually opening it up as you go. It's gonna be very easy to do. Then if the turkey's cooked well, you should be able to just pop the joint and you may not even need the knife to remove it. You can see there the joint just came right out. If it didn't, you can use your knife to run right through that very easily. We're just gonna slice off the end right here. And you're just gonna repeat the exact same process. Just go right down the seam, pull back, and if it doesn't pop, you can go right through the joint. See if we can get a good view of it right there. Cut right around it and remove. So the next step is the breast and we're actually gonna remove it whole from the bird before slicing it so that we can cut against the grain. When you cut it off this way, it's actually gonna be more work for your teeth to chew the bird so it's not gonna feel as tender. Now you can remove the wishbone from the front if you like, but we're gonna leave it on. The first step to removing the breast is you're gonna run your knife right down the center, just a little bit, and you're gonna find that keel bone right in the middle. Now, once you've opened that up, you can see the edge of the bone right there. You're gonna to wanna to take your knife and sweep down along that bone, following it down and removing the breast. So this is where that upswept nature of this curved boning knife really comes in handy, because you can get in there and really sweep down on that bone. Now short butcher knives will work too, something like seven inches or less. That's another great option as well. Now you notice while I'm doing this, I've actually left the wings on. Some people like to take those off first, but actually by leaving them on, they act sort of like a little bit of a kickstand or stabilizer. Helps keep the bird upright while you're cutting. So just keep coming down through there, 
pulling back carefully with your fingers as you come down the bone. And eventually it's gonna curve out this way, so you just keep following that as you go, getting the tenderloin in the process. And there we go, there's one breast removed. Set it aside, we'll go again on the opposite side. And I'm gonna try to do this from a different angle so maybe you guys get a little bit better view on it. It's just gonna make it a little bit more awkward for me, that's okay. Come down on the side of that bone. And because that tip is so thin and a little bit flexible being a boning knife, you can kind of come in and use that flex to your advantage and curve out. And we'll cut finally right there. One more breast done. So if you've done this right, you're not gonna have a whole ton of meat left. I kind of cut a little bit of shallow here, but that's okay. You can either remove this here, pull it off with your fingers and add it to your platter when you plate, or you can just hold it back and reserve it for the leftover turkey salad that you're gonna make tomorrow anyway. So lastly, you can remove the wings here and they should just pull off. But again, if they don't, you can just find that joint and cut through. Now you can either put these again on your platter or if you've got a little kid or a relative that's bugging you in the kitchen, Throw one of these their way, it'll keep them occupied. Now, if the wing doesn't pop out easily, just run your knife on the inside there, find that bone, find that joint, go right through it. There you go. Pull out, slice up, find that joint. You can twist to help you see it a little bit, cut right through. Now, here's a little bit of a uh, cook's secret. If you turn the bird over, and I've already removed it from one side, but at the end of the thigh, you can pull that bit of meat out there, that's the oyster, and as the cook, that's just for you. Now once you've pulled off all the meat that you want to, make sure you save what's left because this is going to make a great starter for a turkey stock. But now we're gonna get this out of the way so we can turn our attention to slicing up the different cuts of meat. So first we're gonna go at one of the drumstick and thighs, and what you're gonna wanna do is turn that over because you can kind of pull from that direction and that's gonna help you see the seam. Again, there's a joint there and you wanna see that seam and just advance up towards it. Once you flex it, you can see that it's right there. Get your knife around the edge and through. Drumstick, we're just gonna put whole onto the platter. Now next, to remove the bone from the thigh, keep it upside down, find the two ends of the bone and run your knife right along there. And then from there, you should be able to kind of cut around the bone and cut it completely away from the meat. Just kind of turning the knife and the piece of meat as you go. It might come off in two pieces like that, that's okay. Again, save that for your stock. All right, I'm gonna put this to the side and do the other one next. Same steps as before. Pull back a little bit, follow that seam with your knife. And once you find the joint, you can see it right there. Get your point in there, cut right around it. Turn the thigh back over, find the ends of your bone, there and there. Slice right along it and around to remove the meat from the bone. Again, if it comes off in two pieces, no big deal. Sometimes it's gonna be messy, that's all right. So now we're gonna switch over to the Wusthof Classic nine inch slicing knife. Now anything between eight and 10 inches is a good length and you wanna use long cuts with as few back and forth motions as you can manage. It gives you a cleaner looking cut on the board. And with that much length, it's very easy to get through in one clean slice, especially if you've sharpened your knife beforehand. So we're gonna go ahead now and transfer that to our platter and continue with the rest. You'll notice I'm cutting across the grain as much as possible so you have a more tender bite. Next, we're gonna turn our attention to the white meat. And again, if you imagine this on the bird, this was the center keel bone right here. So you don't wanna slice this way. You wanna come across the grain so that it's nice and easy to eat. And one smooth, clean slice. That way you don't have kind of a jagged cut along there. It's a nice, perfect cut. Very nice. You can drag the tip along the cutting board as you go. Once you put whatever pressure you need to on the meat itself. And this is where this long slender blade of the slicing knife comes in handier than would a typical chef's knife or santoku because you have a thinner blade and less actual material that's gonna cause drag on the meat while you're cutting. While I'm doing this, I keep my fingers curled back 
using the knuckle here to guide the knife itself. And as you draw back, I move my index finger over to hold things in place so that it goes right where I want it. Move this, let's see if we can move this as a whole over. Great. I will say get yourself a bigger platter than we got here. We kind of misjudged the size of the bird, but that's okay. You can always keep some of the meat in the kitchen. If you do have a smaller platter like this, then once people have eaten a little bit, you can take it right back in the kitchen, throw a little more on there, and it's like the feast that keeps on going. Knuckles back, index finger to hold, and keep on going. And that's the second breast cut. Spin this. Now the moment of truth. Let's see if we can fit it on there at the same time. Oh, it's a little crowded, but it's fine. So then we're just gonna throw our drumsticks back on there, throw a serving fork on there, and before you move it to the table, you can actually pop that in the oven for just a few minutes right at the end. It'll get it nice and crispy on the outside and ready to eat. So that's it, it's now time to eat. Just throw in your favorite side dishes and the meal's ready. If you found this video useful and you wanna see more, make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel and you can support us by clicking the link in the description to get your hands on some of the knives or sharpeners we use today. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>